this morning as a wave is set to bring some serious rain to South Florida. Yes, I'm Todd Tonkin. Good to have you back. Thank you. Get the band back together. That's <laughs> right. Thank you for Just waking up Just in time for the wet weather. Yes, <laughs> yes. Welcome home. Uh, it is Saturday, August 27th. We want to get right over to Jennifer Correa because yeah. there is so much to talk about uh, in the tropics and, uh, and how they affect our weekend weather. Good morning, Jen. Uh, good morning, Todd and Nikki. I miss you guys together. I'm glad you're back. But uh, yes, we're uh, going into a wet weekend. I will say this. Today is a day to enjoy. But right behind me, you can see where that disturbance is. It's basically uh, just off the central Bahamas. Very disorganized, but still with a lot of moisture. So that's going to be the main concern is that a moisture helping to bring some rain into South Florida. Here's a zoom of where this wave is uh, or this disturbance. Very broad area of low pressure. It is going to bring heavy downpours still for parts of Hispaniola, but now into Cuba and of course the Bahamas as well. And so that's going to continue to track towards uh, the west northwest. But now this is not a forecast cone. This is just that polygon that shows you the area that does have that environment that environment where it could develop, but the good news is that formation potential has dropped the next two days, which will be an impact for us only at 20%. So we're not expecting an, a strengthening storm. We're expecting a disturbance, a lot of tropical moisture. Now the models are definitely in agreement that the center of this is going to move over the keys, the lower keys that is. Now it just depends how much moisture is going to be brought across South Florida. Here's the GFS model, which is American model actually moving a little, keeping it a little more south, but still moving it towards the lower keys by Sunday 2 p.m. So a little slower now, arriving a little later. But with that said, rain could start as early as tomorrow in the late evening, at least the heaviest of the rain. Then it pushes into the Gulf of Mexico, where it has a better chance to form or intensify maybe into a tropical system. Then the European model shows that it's even further south, riding closer to Cuba. That, of course, is going to be a lot of land interaction prevented from strengthening. And then again, also heading into the Gulf of Mexico. But either way, there's going to be that surge of moisture around that counterclockwise motion. We're going to consistently have have the chance for showers and storms, especially starting late Sunday into midweek. How much rain could we receive anywhere between three to five inches? Locally, some spots could get higher than that, so flooding is a concern. Back here at home, tracking a few thunderstorms that are headed a little closer to Bis Biscayne Bay. I'll have more on our local forecast coming up. And of course, you can keep tracking the wave right from your smartphone throughout the weekend. Our free Max Tracker app. I've got it. It's great. You can also monitor the rain with live local radar and get direct messages from Max himself. The verdict is in for a woman accused of killing her boyfriend, a Miami police officer. A jury found Nico Thompson guilty of second degree murder. Thompson will now be sentenced for her crime and faces life in prison. Local 10 News reporter Ian Margol is live in Fort Lauderdale with the details on the trial. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Nikki. Yeah, as that verdict was read, Thompson was completely stoic, basically emotionless. And her the uh, victim's family and his friends stood there in relief that they were finally getting justice for his murder. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree. More than two years after Miami police officer Carl Patrick was found murdered in his Pembroke Pines home. On Friday, his former girlfriend, Tanico Thompson, was convicted of the crime. We finally have vindication and everything, but it's still a hurting process. Patrick's family and fellow officers hugged and prayed outside of the courtroom. His old boss, former Miami PD assistant chief Craig McQueen, joined them. We just lost uh, one of our finest, one of our heroes, Carl Patrick, and today justice was served. The prosecution says Thompson killed Patrick after he found out she faked a pregnancy and ran up thousands of dollars on his credit cards. Thompson told police she was abused by Patrick, and on the night of his death, the two had been arguing when he pulled out a gun. Thompson says they struggled for the weapon, and she ended up shooting him in self-defense. Patrick's body was discovered two days later. You leave them there to bleed out and do nothing. Now, Thompson's attorneys say that she was living in fear because of the alleged abuse, but the jury didn't buy that argument, mostly because the state said that that story had changed multiple times throughout the investigation. Now, Thompson faces up to life in prison. We are live in Fort Lauderdale this morning. Ian Margul, Local 10 News. Now to the very latest on Zika fears. Blood banks all across the United States are going to start screening for the virus. 
The government says this is a major expansion intended to protect the nation's blood supply from Zika. Previously, the testing was mostly limited to parts of Florida and Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, Governor Rick Scott was in South Florida on Friday where he held a Zika preparedness roundtable on Miami Beach. He detailed the millions of dollars in funds the state has already allocated to deal with that virus. But some leaders were asking for more amid worries that tourism numbers could potentially take a major hit. We've set aside $26.2 million out of the state budget um, with the support of the legislature. We have, uh, I have the authority to do that. We've allocated $23 million of that already. We just did another um, $5 million to Miami-Dade County. I said, is there a way to look at an emergency budget for marketing, for marketing Miami-Dade County? At this point, there is no word on whether that budget will be created, but Governor Scott is asking Congress to put forward federal funds to help create a vaccine. Members of Congress have been summer in summer recess, but are set to return on September 6th. New overnight, a man accused of killing two nuns in Mississippi is now in police custody. 46-year-old Rodney Earl Sanders has been charged with two counts of capital murder. Sister Margaret Held and Sister Paula Merrill, both 68 years old, were found dead earlier this week after they did not show up for work. Held and Merrill were found stabbed in their Durant, Mississippi home on Thursday. Police say there were signs of a break-in at the home and their car was missing. Police say they caught up with Sanders with help from the public. Held and Merrill worked as nurses and helped the poor in rural Mississippi. Developing right now out of Chicago, two people are now being questioned by police about a shooting that killed Dwayne Wade's cousin. Investigators say she was an innocent bystander. Police say two men began firing at each other while Nikea Aldridge was leaving a Chicago school. They say that Aldridge was caught in that crossfire when a bullet hit her in the arm and the head, killing her. Wade's mother spoke about the tragedy. Wasn't bothering nobody. Just going to register her kids in school and bullets that fly around and have no name decided to find its way to her head. And so we're now in a very, very sensitive, grieving place. The former Heat star recently appeared on a panel discussion to talk about how to cut down on violence in Chicago. He tweeted yesterday, my cousin was killed in Chicago, another act of senseless gun violence. Four kids lost their mom for no reason. Unreal. Enough is enough. The teenager accused in the murder of a Martin County couple and of gnawing on the face of one of the victims has regained consciousness. Police say 19-year-old Austin Haruf is awake and responsive, but hasn't provided a statement to them just yet. He is expected to be charged with the murders of John Stevens and Michelle Mishkin Stevens, who were both killed in their garage nearly two weeks ago. Loved ones said their final goodbyes to a Fort Lauderdale police officer who died in a car crash last weekend. Fellow Fort Lauderdale officers came out to honor Officer Chris Sheehan yesterday. Police say the 30-year-old officer was off duty last Saturday morning when a woman crashed into him near Wiles Road and 441 in Coral Springs. Officer Sheehan was pronounced dead at that scene. He was engaged to be married in October. Now the two crimes caught on camera. Two armed men wearing masks and gloves robbing a pizza shop near Homestead. This surveillance video was taken back in July. At the time, the cashier just started working at the shop on US 1 and 295th Street and didn't know how to work the register. So instead, the robbers took cash from customers and left. Also caught on camera, attempted robbery at a CVS pharmacy in southwest Miami Day. The culprit walked into the store on Quail Roost Drive and 115th Street last month. Police say she pretended to make a purchase before threatening the clerk. The clerk did not react and the alleged robber took off with just a few items. If you know anything about either case, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers the number on your screen, 305-471-TIPS. Teens under fire. The search for a shooter now continues after two teens were shot and one did not survive. Coming up at 530, we will hear from friends and family left heartbroken by the shooting. And also ahead, a 911 dispatcher could be out of a job after losing her cool. After the break, you'll hear the call to her help that led to that suspension. Some activity on the radar this morning, but it's not too bad so far on land. There are a few thunderstorms, actually a cluster that's headed a little closer to Biscayne Bay. I have more on this and the rest of your weekend forecast when we come back. You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan.
police officer in Lake County is under investigation after a video surfaced showing him yelling profanities at a man who was being questioned. The incident happened last December but only came to light recently. The Groveland police chief's attention got his attention this week and investigators say officers were responding to a call of a man attempting suicide. In the video you can see Groveland Police Sergeant Charles Russell yelling at that man. The snippet that is going around, uh, it is concerning. Um, we're going to address it. Um, I have initiated an internal review of, of that scenario as well as of many others. And uh, we're going to uh, follow through with it and address it and make sure that this is not a repeat offense. It is not the first time Russell's behavior has been questioned. He was written up in May for allegedly writing discriminatory comments on social media. She had the floor. Uh, sir, who robbed you? Me, me, me and the, the two people. Yeah, she's in the car. How do you help? Sir, they're on the way, but I need to get information from you. That dispatcher you just heard from is now on administrative leave, and police say it's because of her conduct during this 911 call. Police say two delivery drivers were robbed and attacked by a group of teens in Connecticut. They say the female victim was shot while the male victim was physically assaulted. The man, that man, was the one who called 911. Which way did the car head? Could you tell me that? Huh? Which way did the car go after they shot at you and robbed you? Yeah, yeah. No, the officers are there. You might as well talk to them now. Thank you. The 59-year-old victim who was shot died at the hospital. Police arrested four people for the murder. The dispatcher has now been placed on administrative leave pending an internal affairs investigation. Deputies in Wisconsin caught up with a suspect using an unexpected tool. This week, Villas County deputies used a drone to catch a man who allegedly threatened officers. The man was spotted by that drone in a forest and a SWAT team was then able to arrest him without incident. Time now, 515, 82 degrees. The only thing I'm looking forward to this weekend is the temperatures in the 70s because it was hot yesterday. Well, I don't think you're having a problem with temperatures in the 70s. But we'll yeah, I mean, we're going to get rain, but at morning. least it's going to be cool. <laughs> yeah, in the well, I well, don't know, cool. That's cool compared to how about, yesterday. How about sticky, Jennifer, how hot has it been? and humid? Yes, it's, it's been hot. I mean, <laughs> we we were almost in the mid-90s the past few days, but but it's not going to be too cool. It's going to be quite uh, uncomfortable out there with the stickiness and the humidity and all that moisture. Uh, actually, this morning, it's a warm start. It's only 84 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, 82 in Miami. The only uh, cool spot, which really doesn't feel that cool, but the temperature, actual temperature has dropped to 78, is Kendall. Now, winds are out of the east and north and they'll stay like that for today. Right now it's a light breeze out there anywhere between three to up to nine miles per hour, but we do expect uh, breezier conditions that will be increasing as we especially by tonight. Now a few showers popping up offshore and by the Keys as well, but also over the Atlantic Ocean, even a couple of thunderstorms. Now these are tracking closer to Biscayne Bay, but as that happens, notice that it dissipates on the western side of the storm. Pretty interesting how that's happening. So I don't think this will be a huge impact if you're heading out in Biscayne Bay, but if you're going to head out towards the Atlantic, yes, it will be a couple of lightning strikes associated with that. Maybe a water spout that definitely cannot be ruled out with that storm there. Here's a look at the lower keys. Just some spotty showers rolling by. They're moving towards the west southwest rather rapidly. Now we do expect breezier conditions. As I mentioned, showers and storms, which is typical for this time of year. This will be uh, indirect from the tropical wave, but I will say this, the chance for showers and storms will be increasing as we head into Sunday. Sunday should be windy. We're talking about winds up to 20, maybe 25 miles per hour and gusts higher than that. Uh, but rain also arriving. Now we expect the worst or the heaviest of the rain around Sunday night overnight into Monday morning. So Monday morning's commute not looking too good so far based on the models. Here's a look at what the forecast model is showing as far as rainfall amounts and uh, so far it's been fluctuating up and down we've seen I've seen five inches but now on the map you really don't see that however can't rule that out in a few spots but so far it looks like at least two 
to three inches and again maybe even up to five if we were to take that that's until Monday so if we were to take that into midweek because we do expect wet conditions even through Wednesday so if you want to make it a beach day you can today there could be still a few showers but hey today's a better day to head out there use that sunscreen keep in mind the rip current risk is moderate that could go to high later on today uh, as uh, the seas should stir up just a little bit no advisory so far for Miami Dade and Broward for boaters out there including the keys. The seas will be increasing though so far for today, three to five feet beyond the reef. And uh, for the forecast high today, we'll get up there into the low 90s as usual. But then with the clouds and rain as we head into Sunday and early into next week, notice that temperatures will only be in the upper 80s for those daytime highs. Nikki. Thank you, Jennifer. Now to events that are happening around South Florida. Take a journey through the history of South Florida sports at the History Miami Museum. Journalist, documentarian, and filmmaker and uh, curator Gaspar Gonzalez will lead the way starting at 1 o'clock this afternoon. To register, all you have to do is go to visit historymiami.org. Take a walk with the butterflies today. You can explore their habitat at the historic Deering Estate, beautiful location. Guests can check out the nearly 40 butterfly species that live on site. The walk starts at 11 o'clock and it is free with admission into the Deering Estate. For more information, visit DeeringEstate.org. And for South Florida music lovers, you can head over to Arts Park in downtown Hollywood. There's a free concert series. Bring a blanket or a beach chair and hang out at the Young Circle while watching local artists perform. The event is free. That starts at 8 p.m. For more information, go to visit HollywoodFL.org. Well, a karate master sending a message of my future, my choice. Coming up, how he's putting his skills to work at helping at-risk kids. <laughs> Always watching, always tracking. Meteorologist Jennifer Correa on the one and only Local 10 News, your weather authority. Welcome back. We have a very special My Future, My Choice report for you this morning. A longtime karate master is now lending his time and expertise to teach at-risk kids the importance of the four cornerstones of martial arts. Here's his story. We get to like kick. Switch. We get to do fun stuff in here. Five, six. Martial arts sensei Ray Doucette has been practicing and teaching martial arts for nearly half a decade, but he has never quite had a class like this. Most of our students in our school come from high poverty backgrounds. Um, they don't have a lot of means to sign up for a program like karate. In a makeshift dojo inside Pompano Beach Elementary School, a free summer pilot program wraps up with a karate demo. And they're learning more than just how to punch and kick. We're going to bring the four cornerstones of karate to the kids. Respect, discipline, courtesy, and honor. Have your teachers and parents noticed a change in your behavior? Yes. What kind of changes? That I be respectful to them and I... Uh, um, don't be rude to them no more like I used to. You can protect yourself out in the real world because some people might can snatch you and like try to fight you. And the Karate Kid's families are noticing a change. You take a child that's used to being bullied, now he's gaining confidence because he knows that in the future he has a way of defending himself. But Sensei Ray says the teachings transgress the training. Benefit is discipline, respect, courtesy, better grades, better behaviors. They can learn to make smarter choices in life so they can be more productive and independent citizens. Left neutral! <laughs> Four! <laughs> five! Have you ever thought of getting a PA system because you're a little soft-spoken? No. <laughs> I've never been told that. Five! <laughs> six! <laughs> in, you wow. Know, you know I'm loud. Yes. Right? This guy makes yes. me look like, uh, yeah. you know, a But shy he's person. powerful and he's passionate. I was looking forward to seeing you in your gi. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no. He was focused on the kids. And he really, you know, the kids really respond to him yes. very well. Um, and what was also cool is that they, the kids had to put in some sweat equity. They yes. actually held a car wash to raise money for their uniforms. Right. And so they had to participate in that. So awesome. Talk about your wax on, wax off. That's right. And he cares, which is what's important. That's right, Sensei. Well, claims of classroom abuse have one teacher at risk of losing her job now. 
Coming up at 5.30, a mother telling the one and only that she saw a teacher slap a student. Also coming up next, a would-be burglar met with an unexpected surprise that sent him running when a single mother and her children fight back. This is not the wrong video. Yeah, but we'll have more on this shooting in Liberty City yesterday. Two, two teens, one dead, one hurt. Next. Take Local 10 online with you wherever you're headed. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction. Local 10 News starts right now. Welcome back. It's 530 on this Saturday morning. And of course, we are tracking the tropics. What a roller coaster we've been through this week with the tropics. Yeah, but so far, so good. Your weather authority watching that wave that could bring some major rain our way this weekend. And how much wet weather can we expect? That's a question for Jennifer Gray. Yeah, it's been quite a roller coaster ride. I, I my I, I feel like my brain has been going back and forth and just like the models when we were talking about this about maybe 10 to 12 days ago, it was uh, the models were showing a really aggressive and intense storm. So this is really good news that we didn't even get a name storm out of this disturbance, but it's still a rainmaker and this is going to continue on. Now it doesn't look too impressive right now, maybe because uh, or it should be because the sun is down and overnight you lose that convective activity. But once the sun is up, that daytime heating will allow for more showers and thunderstorms to build and will spread basically from central Bahamas even down to Hispaniola, parts of Cuba as well. Now looks very disorganized on infrared satellite. There is some outflow going on, but it is just being sheared out ahead of this. That wind shear is expected to drop as this uh, the center of this uh, broad low pressure system continues to track towards the west northwest formation potential the next two days. This is what we are looking at 20% then once it heads into the Gulf of Mexico in the next five days, it has just a higher chance for formation. Of course, over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, that's where it's expected to maybe intensify into a tropical storm. Nonetheless, uh, we don't expect a uh, named storm, but the models are definitely agreement. This is going to head somewhere into the lower middle keys. Now that's going to push in a lot of moisture wrapping around that counterclockwise motion. That's why we expect high a possibility of high rainfall amounts starting tomorrow into Monday. I'll have all those details coming up, but I do want to mention this morning relatively quiet except for offshore. Uh, those thunderstorms getting a little closer to Biscayne Bay. Lots of lightning strikes with this one, so boaters beware of that thunderstorm. It's actually dissipating as it gets closer to Biscayne Bay, but it's still pretty strong if you head out to the Atlantic waters. Now temperatures are warm. We're starting off in the low 80s winds light out of the east northeast, but we do expect higher wind speeds later uh, starting on later this evening and then the impacts to expect starting tomorrow to midweek is that heavy rain and the flooding concerns. Again, I'll have all those details plus your seven day in a few minutes. Nikki. Thank you, Jen. We're following breaking news out of Northwest Miami-Dade right now. There is a large police presence at Northwest 84th Street and 19th Avenue. We have unconfirmed reports that a shooting may have happened outside of a wake for another shooting victim. Um, but again, we're waiting for police to get back to us on that. Local 10 has a crew there, and of course, we will bring you updates as they become available. Teens under fire. Two teens shot after someone opens fire in Liberty City, and one of the teens did not survive. The search for the shooter now continues this morning, and the teen's family asking for the public for help. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston is live on this um, in Miami, where this other teen is recovering this morning. How are they doing, Laren? Well, Nikki Todd, this family was hit twice. We're hearing that the young people who were shot involved in this shooting were cousins. A 17 year old was shot in the stomach. He remains here at Jackson Memorial Hospital where he is recovering. And then his cousin, unfortunately, 18 years old, did not survive this shooting. Can't talk to her no more. I can't do nothing with her no more. A mother's anguish augmented by reminders of a young life taken. She don't go out. She's not a troublemaker. It was Thursday night when family members say the shooting started at the Liberty Square apartment complex. As soon as she came in the house, we heard gunshots. We're told Nisha Flowers was with her cousin when she was shot. He's expected to be okay. Sadly, Nisha did not make it. Detectives canvassed the neighborhood Friday. Please give us peace in this community. While others called for calm. 
They say there's been too much gun violence, not enough speaking out. If y'all saw anything, anything, just please, please. She did not deserve this. And back live here, if you have any information about this shooting, who is involved, who is responsible, you're encouraged to contact authorities as soon as possible. For now, reporting live outside Jackson Memorial Hospital there in Livingston, Local 10 News. She was sad because she saw one of her little friends being hit by the teacher. Now to one and only exclusive, a mother outrage after she says she witnessed a teacher beating a student on Miami Beach. The mother says she was picking up her daughter from Lincoln Marti when she saw the teacher slapping the boy across the face multiple times. Laura Pantano said she also saw the teacher, identified as Clara Luz Quintano Gonzalez, grab the boy by his shoulders and shake him. Pantano confronted the then teacher and called police. This is up to the to justice, what is her destiny. For me, she should be removed from the school system and definitely not be dealing with children. Miami Beach police investigating the incident along with the De Department of Children and Families. Quintana Gonzalez did not give a statement to police, but has since been suspended. Police are crediting the public with helping catch a serial burglar. He was caught on camera climbing through a window of a home on North 31st Avenue in Hollywood last month. Detectives say he then stole about $4,000 in cash and jewelry. Police have arrested 64-year-old Rafael Ro Rodriguez Noya. They say someone saw the video on the news and called in a tip. The Broward Sheriff's Office says a man who was caught on camera knocking a woman down and stealing her gold chain has now been identified. Detectives say 24-year-old Malcolm Turner is the attacker, suspected attacker. He was arrested earlier this week for probation violations and resisting arrest. He is now facing charges of strong-arm robbery and elder abuse. Deputies say it is Turner you see here on this video knocking down the elderly victim as she left a Wendy's restaurant so he could rip a chain from her neck. Luckily, she was not seriously injured in that attack. Broward Sheriff's deputies have arrested a man for a fatal crash involving a mother and her son. They say 27-year-old Joel Hamlar was behind the wheel of an SUV that veered off the road, pinning the victim against a utility pole. This was the scene back in March along North Dixie Highway. Deborah Etienne and her 14-year-old son Jameson were hit. Deborah did not survive. Her son lost his leg. Detectives say toxicology on the suspect came back positive for multiple drugs. The Boca Raton man recently charged in a decades-old murder was back in court yesterday. A judge agreed to grant Alan Bregman $100,000 bond once he posts it. The 75-year-old will be released on house arrest and will have to wear an ankle monitor. Bregman was arrested earlier this month in North Carolina for the 1977 death of his then-girlfriend, Deborah Clark. Clark was a 23-year-old nurse when she was killed in her Coral Gables home. Investigators say Bregman's DNA and fingerprints match those left behind at the crime scene. Now to vote 2016, Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine is on his way here to South Florida after making a stop at a rally in Tallahassee. Kaine spoke at Florida A&M University during a voter registration event where he pointed out the support that Donald Trump receives from white supremacists. And as we mentioned, Kane is making his way here to South Florida. He, you can count on Local 10 to be there. And the VP candidate is expected to be in Pembroke Pines this morning before then ending the day with a small business tour in Miami Lakes. In Italy, people are coming together for funeral services honoring some of the victims of the earthquake that killed about 260 people. In Pomizia, the service that honored two women and their granddaughters, as well as three others who died in the earthquake this week. More than 100 miles away, strong aftershocks damaged, caused more damage in the Italian town of Amatrice yesterday. Thousands were forced to leave their homes in the area. Officials have declared a state of emergency as well as a national day of mourning. Tarmac trouble, a man going on really a bizarre and dangerous drive. Coming up, we are learning new details about the man police say stole a truck, then crashed it into a plane. Still ahead in our morning sports wrap, two of the best high school football teams in the country facing off right here in South Florida. We have the highlights coming up next. Good morning, South Florida. Happy Saturday. It looks like we could actually enjoy today before the heavy downpours expected later on this weekend, uh, but it is a warm start. 82 degrees and it feels like 90 degrees out there with cloudy skies at the moment. Todd Tonkin and Nikki Mohan on the one and only Local 10 News.
We just got a report of a person possibly jumping the fence over at the airfield. A man is now in custody after a major security breach at an airport in Omaha, Nebraska. Police say the suspect stripped down to his boxers and drove a truck into a Southwest Airlines plane. Police say the man was in front of the airport screaming that people were trying to kill him. They say he bolted for a parking garage, hopped over a fence, and then jumped inside a truck that had been left running. Police say he then slammed that truck into the plane that was boarding for a flight to Denver. Several crew members had minor injuries, but none of the 18 travelers on board were hurt. Southwest officials say the plane has been removed from service until it can be inspected. Major flooding in Kansas City as heavy rains fall across the Midwest. Several counties in the Kansas City area are now under flood warnings. There have been reports of downed tree limbs and branches. At least one tornado was spotted, but luckily no structures have been damaged and no injuries reported. 542 right now, of course, we have been spared so far a tropical storm or a hurricane, and it was looking yeah. like this could turn into something, but we really haven't been spared. Yeah, from we, we can't sleep on this. The weather. Yeah, because, we could see some flooding yeah, we're here, gonna right? We're going to get a lot of rain. Yeah, there's the flood concern because, of course, we do expect some heavy downpours. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to be everywhere as far as uh, that heavy rainfall. It could come in bands, so it could be just on and off, but some spots will get some heavy amounts of rainfall. We'll look over that in just a sec. But right now, waking up to warm temperatures as uh, temperatures are only dropping into the low 80s this morning. It's actually 84 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, 82 in Miami, 78 in Kendall. So that is the only uh, temperature on the map that's actually dropped into the 70s, the only location and elsewhere also in the low 80s, including the Keys. But it feels like the 90s out there. So very humid conditions with winds light at the moment, anywhere between three to up to 10 miles per hour out of the east northeast. We do expect breezier winds later on today. Also on the radar, some activity out there, but hey, it's dry on land so far. Now there's been the showers and storms developing offshore as they get a little closer to the coast, kind of clipping the Key Biscayne uh, right there, as you can see on the southern end with just some light drizzles, but the heavy rain just stays offshore and actually dissipates as it approaches into Biscayne Bay. So that's some good news there. A few spotty showers in and around the lower keys. Most of it is offshore as well. Breezy conditions expected later on today. Showers and storms typical for this time of year, but I will say this today is the better day to head out and enjoy. We could see some rain, uh, some consistent rain starting later on tonight and into tomorrow, but it should be light. The heavier downpour is expected to arrive late Sunday and that will continue on into Monday morning. Now Sunday should be windy, including on Monday. We're talking about wind speeds up to 20, 20, 20 to 25 miles per hour. Maybe wind gusts heavier than or higher than that. Heavy rain Monday morning. And then it should start to lighten up a bit, but rain chances are still staying high as we head into the middle part of the week. Now, this is a look at the GFS model. You could see the wind particles trying to wrap around this disturbance, but there is no close circulation. Very weak. That's a good sign. So no intensification as it heads into the Florida Straits and near the lower keys by Sunday afternoon and then out into the Gulf of Mexico. That's where it has that higher chance for formation. Now, what can we expect with the heavy downpour? Some areas, especially those areas with um, uh, the urban areas could see some flooding. That's uh, something we can't rule out. We're talking about three to five inches of rain. As I mentioned, gusty winds rip current risk should increase to high, maybe as early as late today. But for now, it's a moderate rip current risk. So beachgoers, if you want to head out to the beach today, you can. I think today's a better day. Just, you know, be careful with that water since those seas should be stirring up a little bit. No advisories for boaters. Your seas two to four feet will be increasing up to five throughout today. Showers still possible with a few storms, but again, this is not going today is not going to be a complete washout. We expect a heavy rain tomorrow arriving late Sunday, continuing on into Monday morning and then rain chances actually staying high through midweek. High temperatures will stay in the upper 80s. Hey, a good Saturday morning to you. I'm Kirk Jimenez with your local 10 morning sports wrap. If there was a Super Bowl in high school football, Last night's game between Booker T. Washington and St. Thomas Aquinas would be considered a super showdown, at least a super preview. Two of the top teams in the nation clashing right here in South Florida. St. Thomas alum Michael Irvin, the Hall of Famer with the coin toss. This game living up to the hype at Traz Powell Stadium. Wild start, Booker T. Washington throwing a pick to open the game. Then Gator commit Paul Allen fumbles on a sack, giving the ball right back. 
uh, which set up this Booker T touchdown. Daniel Richardson to Sherrod Johnson and St. Thomas answering with a rushing touchdown by Michael Epstein. Booker T would go to win on this uh, wild affair, 27-23 the final. NFL preseason, Patriots playing Tom Brady at the Panthers in second quarter. You can't suspend him in the preseason, so he's going to do this to you. 33-yard touchdown to Chris Hogan. Patriots win 19-17. to The Dolphins with a solid showing in their third preseason game. Quarterback Ryan Tannehill had a pass tip and pick the other night, but he was very efficient. 20 of 29 passing as the Finns beat the Falcons 17-6 to on Thursday night. Coach Adam Gase pleased with how his quick-paced offense performed. But I felt like the, the tempo was really, really good. I, I feel like that two-minute drive, we, we got even a little gas there at the end. I wish I would have had a different call there for that when we had nine seconds left. It's, it's tough because you don't want to show everything. You don't want to put everything out there in the preseason. Marlins hosting the Padres. Fish were down three runs entering the eighth, but Kristen Yelich delivers the RBI single. We're tied at six in the ninth. Chris Johnson, is it deep enough? Will it fall? Hey, yeah, yeah, walk off win. And of course, Johnson's going to get the shaving cream pie in the face. 7 6 the final. What a comeback win for the fish. Although, this time uh, in the morning, you kind of need the whipped cream instead of the shaving cream to complete the strawberry breakfast. Mm, I'm Kirk Kamenis, and that's your local 10 morning sports wrap. All right, thanks, Kirk. A single mother and her children fighting back after a burglar targeted their home. Coming up, the unusual weapon that sent the burglar running. A Michigan mother and her two sons put up quite the fight when an intruder broke into their home. The family actually used a samurai sword to fight off the man trying to force his way through their front door. Sarah Ward says the man kicked their door open and as she tried to keep him out, that's when her oldest son grabbed the sword and ran at him as fast as he could. So I ran and grabbed the sword and ran, ran at the guy as fast as I could in full intention of doing as much damage to him as possible. Ward says she now has a gun to protect her family the next time. Police are still searching for the man who broke in. A woman is facing charges after a high-speed chase that was caught on camera in Wisconsin. Because you're going so fast, my laser could even catch you. You're going so fast. Speed's over 110 and a 40, you still can't catch her. That driver allegedly drove down a construction zone so fast that police could not keep up, so they met her at her home. And that's where she allegedly made threats to kill them. Police say that driver is 41-year-old Sarah Sebo. Officers said they suspected Sebo had been drinking. A shocking discovery for two Canadian best friends. They recently figured out that they were switched at birth. It's like that show 41 years ago. Both David Tate and Leon Swanson were born in the same hospital in early 1975, three days apart. It's unclear how, but DNA has now proven that Tate's biological mother went home with the wrong baby, Swanson. The news is shocking, but they say not surprising. For decades, there have been comments that each resembled each other's families. About 20 years old, people start teasing us, you know what I mean, but being switched. It will always be my mom and dad, regardless, you know. They raised me, they, they took me from day one. The federal health minister has now promised that the families will investigate the case to try and figure out what happened. At that point, what do you do? I think you just embrace everyone. And, yeah. You know, both families. And they both ended up with families that took care of them. Yeah. Well, a delicate rescue, and this one was caught on camera. Yeah, coming up, an officer giving a helping hand. After spotting a skunk, I don't think it went so well. He tried to help him. We'll tell you what happened next. A live look now from our Fort Lauderdale Tower cam, dark and early on your weekend. Jennifer says there is a big dose of rain in our forecast, but when will it right, get here? Right, but there, there may some, be some bright spots. She'll tell you all about it. At least today. An Arkansas police officer came to the rescue of a skunk. Believe it or not. Brave guy. <laughs> the video has been making the rounds <laughs> on social media. That's right. University of Arkansas Corporal Gabriel Golden spotted a skunk walking around with a cup on its face. And so he went and he grabbed it. And what you can see there, the officer reached down, grabs the cup, and then runs off because he was trying to avoid the skunk's defense mechanism. You know, 
he that would have stunk if he had gone. But look at that. <laughs> yes. But look at that. He, you that's know, pretty brave, really. That's is. very brave. And you have know, you ever been skunked? Um, no. Is your dog been skunked? No, thankfully. Let me tell you something. It, you, you, it's so hard to get rid of the smell. You gotta like wash them in like uh, tomato juice and stuff. It's it's really crazy. <laughs> or use vanilla extract. There's all kinds of I'll, things. I'll take your word for it. Yes, it's an <laughs> ugly, ugly. So the come this morning, folks. Uh, of course, we have the forecast. Take a live look out of our my uh, Fort Lauderdale tower cam as we go to break. Local 10 news at 6 a.m. Coming up next. Right now on Local 10 Morning News, your authority is tracking the tropics. What you can expect this weekend as that tropical threat pushes closer to us. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree. A woman accused of gunning down her Miami police officer boyfriend. She's found guilty. How long could she end up behind bars? Plus teens under fire. Two teens gunned down as they walked in the streets of Miami. This morning, distraught family members asking for help. And another deadly shooting, claiming an innocent life on the streets of Chicago. And this time, a cousin of Dwayne Wade was hit. What the former Heat star had to say. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. First off, we'd like to wish you a good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Mohan. And I'm Todd Tongan. Thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday, August 27th. Of course, we want to get right over to yeah. Jennifer Correa with a look at the forecast. We're all back together again, just in time for the tropics. <laughs> yeah, that's right, just in time. Uh, actually, and uh, we do expect rain, but we are seeing much, much better news as far as this disturbance goes uh, because it's not expected to strengthen as it gets closer to the Keys and to South Florida by tomorrow afternoon. Here it is on satellite. Very hard to pinpoint if you actually didn't know that location, but it's basically near the central Bahamas. Very disorganized, but still there is some convection. There are some th showers and thunderstorms this morning. Not as intense because remember we need some daytime heating. So that'll probably get going later on today as uh, the sun rises and those temperatures warm up. Uh, but this area, the formation potential has 20% for the next two, day, two days. And that's the concern for us because of course it's going to be an impact by Sunday, late Sunday into Monday. And then when it heads into the Gulf of Mexico has that 40% chance for formation. The models said uh, as far as the track goes almost all in agreement. As you can see, we're getting closer to where it's going to cross over the key. So of course they're agreeing. So we will see this move across uh, the, at least the lower keys and the Florida Straits. This is still going to bring plenty of moisture. Here's a GFS model bringing it exactly to that point as you just saw on those tracks. Now the low, the center, I should say, still elongated, very weak circulation. So it's a weak system, a weak disturbance. Still a lot of moisture expected over South Florida. And then the European has it even further south of that track. But again, it is a tropical moisture that's expected to surge all across South Florida. That's going to really enhance those rain chances, rainfall amounts, in fact, starting late Sunday into Monday. And then here's Tropical Storm Gaston holding on as Tropical Storm. It's pretty strong, 65 mile per hour maximum sustained winds actually expected to increase and intensify into Category 1, then a Category 2 as it quickly turns out towards the northern Atlantic Ocean. So not an impact, thankfully not an impact to Bermuda maybe just some higher swells. I do want to mention the uh, concern for formation potential also includes two other areas on either side of me in yellow. Not a concern for us. We're going to keep an eye on the disturbance all weekend long. We do have a few showers out there offshore. Uh, they are starting to dissipate as they get a little closer to Kiwi Skein. Nikki. And of course, to keep tracking that wave throughout the weekend and to monitor all the local rainfall that is expected with live local radar, all you have to do is just download our free local 10 app, the Max Tracker. And you can even get direct messages from Max himself. We're probably breaking news out of Northwest Miami Dade right now, where there is a large police present at the area, presence rather, at the area of Northwest 84th Street and 19th Avenue. Local 10 has a crew there. And we are working to confirm exactly what police are investigating. We will bring you updates as they come in. A jury has spoken in the case of a woman accused of gunning down her Miami police officer boyfriend. Taniko Thompson was found guilty in court yesterday. That verdict comes more than two years after the deadly shooting that killed Officer Carl Patrick. And now Thompson could face a life behind bars. 
Local 10 News reporter Ian Margo is, has the latest in Fort Lauderdale. He has the full story. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Nikki. Good morning, Todd. Yeah, as that verdict was read, Thompson was stoic, basically emotionless. And at the same time, there was a lot of emotion from the victim's family and friends finally getting justice nearly two years after he was killed. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree. More than two years after Miami police officer Carl Patrick was found murdered in his Pembroke Pines home on Friday, his former girlfriend, Tonico Thompson, was convicted of the crime. We finally have vindication and everything, but it's still a hurting process. Patrick's family and fellow officers hugged and prayed outside of the courtroom. His old boss, former Miami PD assistant chief Craig McQueen, joined them. We just lost uh, one of our finest, one of our heroes, Carl Patrick, and today justice was served. The prosecution says Thompson killed Patrick after he found out she faked a pregnancy and ran up thousands of dollars on his credit cards. Thompson told police she was abused by Patrick, and on the night of his death, the two had been arguing when he pulled out a gun. Thompson says they struggled for the weapon, and she ended up shooting him in self-defense. Patrick's body was discovered two days later. You leave them there to bleed out and do nothing. Now, Tomiko's, Tomiko's uh, attorneys say that she was abused, living in fear. But the jury didn't really buy that, mostly because the state said that her story changed multiple times throughout the investigation. Now she faces possibly a life sentence in prison. Live in Fort Lauderdale, Ian Margo, Local 10 News. New overnight, a man accused of killing two nuns in Mississippi is now in custody. 46-year-old Rodney Earl Sanders has been charged with two counts of capital murder. Sister Margaret Held and Sister Paula Merrill, both 68 years old, were found dead earlier this week after they did not show up for work. Held and Merrill were found stabbed inside their Durant, Mississippi home on Thursday. Police said there were signs of a break-in at their home and their car was missing. Police said they caught up with Sanders with help from the public. Held and Merrill worked as nurses and helped the poor in rural Mississippi. Now to the latest on Zika fears. Blood banks all across the U.S. are going to start screening for the virus. The government says this is a major expansion intended to protect the nation's blood supply from Zika. Previously, the testing was mostly limited to parts of Florida and Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, Governor Rick Scott was in South Florida on Friday where he held a Zika preparedness roundtable on Miami Beach. He detailed the millions of dollars in funding that the state has already allocated to deal with the virus, but some leaders were asking for more amid worries that tourism numbers could potentially take a major hit. We've set aside $26.2 million out of the state budget um, with the support of the legislature. We have, uh, I have the authority to do that. We've allocated $23 million of that already. We just did another um, $5 million to Miami-Dade County. I said, is there a way to look at an emergency budget for marketing, for marketing Miami-Dade County? There's still no word on whether that budget will be created, but Governor Scott is asking Congress to put forward federal funds to help create a vaccine. Members of Congress have been in summer recess, but are set to return on September 6th. In more Zika news, in the aftermath of the Rio Olympic Games, health officials around the world say they're happy to report there have been no laboratory-confirmed cases of Zika in spectators, athletes, or anyone else associated with the Olympics. Now that doesn't mean that no one caught Zika at the Games, seeing that most cases of Zika only show mild symptoms and go unreported. A developing story out of Chicago. Two people now being questioned by police about a shooting that killed Dwayne Wade's cousin. Investigators say that she was just an innocent bystander. Police say two men began firing at each other while Nikea Aldridge was leaving a Chicago school. They say Aldridge was caught in the crossfire when a bullet hit her in the arm and in the head. D. Wade's mother spoke about that tragedy. Wasn't bothering nobody. Just going to register her kids in school and bullets that fly around and have no name decided to find its way to her head. And so we're now in a very, very sensitive, grieving place. The former Heat star recently appeared on a panel discussing how to cut down on violence in Chicago. He tweeted yesterday, quote, my cousin was killed in Chicago. Another act of senseless gun violence. Four kids lost their mom for no reason. Unreal. Enough is enough. The teenager accused in the murder of a Martin County couple and of gnawing on the face of one of the victims has regained consciousness. Police say 19-year-old Austin Haruf is awake and responsive, but hasn't provided a statement yet. He is expected to be charged with the murders of John Stevens and Michelle Mishkin Stevens, who were both killed in their garage nearly two weeks ago. 
Loved ones said their final goodbyes to a Fort Lauderdale police officer who died in a car crash last weekend. Fellow Fort Lauderdale officers came out to honor Officer Chris Sheehan yesterday. Police say the 30-year-old officer was off duty last Saturday morning when a woman crashed into him near Wiles Road and 441 in Coral Springs. Officer Sheehan was pronounced dead at that scene. He was engaged to be married in October. De a developing story investigation underway after a man and woman were found dead a short distance from each other in northwest Miami-Dade. Police identified the man as 19-year-old Christopher Francois, who was found a few blocks from Grenells Park School in North Miami Beach. Miami-Dade police found the woman inside of a red Toyota outside a home about a mile and a half away from Francois near North Miami Beach as well. Investigators say they are not yet linking the two incidents. What's going on? Why is this happening? Why did that happen over here? It doesn't seem like a thing that would happen in this neighborhood. Miami-Dade police asking anyone with information to contact them. Now to two crimes caught on camera. Two armed men wearing masks and gloves robbing a pizza shop near Homestead. This is surveillance video taken back in July. At the time, the cashier just started working at the shop on US 1 and 295th Street and didn't know how to work the register. So instead, the robbers took cash from customers and left. Also caught on camera, an attempted robbery at a CVS pharmacy in southwest Miami-Dade. The culprit walked into the store on Quail Rouge Drive and 115th Avenue last month. Police say she intended to make a purchase before threatening the clerk. The clerk did not react and the alleged robber took off with just a few items. If you know anything about either robbery, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers, the number 305-471-TIPS. The FBI is on the hunt for a robber that they are calling the Filter Bandit. They say in two years he has been involved in nine different bank robberies in Broward County. Authorities say yesterday he hit the SunTrust Bank on University Drive in Wiles Road. They say he showed a weapon, demanded money, and ran away with the cash. No one was hurt, thankfully. Authorities believe he got away in a gray Toyota Corolla. The FBI is offering $5,000 for information leading to his arrest. Donald Trump is their candidate because Donald Trump is pushing their values. Ku Klux Klan values, David Duke values, Donald Trump values are not American values. Vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine joining the bitter war of words between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton on a campaign stop right here in Florida. Kane appeared at the event in Tallahassee on Friday. He'll be here in South Florida this morning. This is a new poll released by the Florida Chamber of Commerce shows Trump actually pulling ahead of Clinton by a slim margin. That difference shrinks even more when candidates Gary Johnson and Jill Stein are taken out of consideration. Meanwhile, Florida's primary elections will take place Tuesday, but it's not shaping up to be too much of a contest. Marco Rubio with a commanding lead in the Republican race over challenger Carlos Baruf. And also across the aisle, Patrick Murphy solidly ahead of U.S. Representative Alan Grayson. Well, a 911 dispatcher is now on administrative leave this morning for how she handled an emergency call. The recording you just won't believe ahead. A warm start on this Saturday morning. So far, it's quiet on land as far as no rain, but we do have a few showers offshore. Look at these temperatures. We're starting off in the low to mid 80s. Feels like the 90s out there. All those details on our weekend forecast, plus how much rain can you expect when we come back? You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan. A high-speed police pursuit caught on camera in Arkansas. Just take a look at this, how fast this guy's going. Police say this started when officers pulled a driver over for fake tags. That's when he sped away with several police cars on his tail. And you can see that driver made a hard right turning, trying to get onto the expressway, but he ended up colliding with another car in his path. Police quickly moved in and made an arrest. I, they identified that driver as 22-year-old Zachary Mitchell. Officers also arrested two women who were inside the car as well, one of them only 17 years old. Mitchell was charged with felony fleeing and possessing a controlled substance. Get the floor. Uh, sir, who robbed you? Me, me, me and the, the two people. Yeah, she's in the car. How do you help? Sir, uh, they're on the way, but I need to get information from you. The dispatcher you just heard from is now on administrative leave, and police say it's because of her conduct during this 911 call. Police say two delivery drivers were robbed and attacked by a group of teens in Connecticut. They say the female victim was shot while the male victim was physically assaulted. The man was the one who called 911. Which way did the car head? Could you tell me that? Huh? 
Which way did the car go after they shot at you and robbed you? Yeah, yeah. Well, the officers are there. You might as well talk to them now. Thank you. The 59-year-old victim who was shot died at the hospital. Police arrested four people in that murder. The dispatcher has now been placed on administrative leave pending an internal affairs investigation. A real-life castaway story. Two boaters now recovering after being stranded on an uninhabited island in the Pacific for a week. A U.S. Navy rescue crew, look at this, they spotted that SOS drawn in the sand and they sent for help. Officials say the two castaways had limited supplies and no emergency equipment on board their boat when they left. They were picked up and taken to a nearby Micronesian island to be evaluated. Wilson! <laughs> wow, that would be scary, let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little bit of a scary forecast. You're saying, Jennifer, that today definitely, definitely the better day of the right, weekend. Right, which is good. I have a baby shower to go to today. Yeah, <laughs> and key, key word better, or key words, better day, because, yeah, we could still have our typical showers and storms due to daytime heating. We're seeing a few showers actually developing offshore. We'll get to the radar in just a sec. Now, temperatures actually starting off in the low 80s, a very warm start. And meanwhile, the upper 70s for you in Kendall. It's 85 degrees in Marathon. Now, once you step out the door, you'll be hit with humidity. It's going to feel like the low 90s this early this morning, even though the sun is still not up. So it will be a hot Saturday and winds expected to increase, but right now relatively light 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the east and northeast. And here's a few of those showers I mentioned that are offshore. They are tracking towards the west, but as they get closer to the coast, they just seem to well dissipate. Uh, there was a heavier thunderstorm, so you can see a couple lightning strikes in that first frame, but then it dissipates to a few showers. I think these showers will actually make it through into Cape Biscayne. Uh, some of these producing just some heavy rainfall in a few spots and then the lower keys so dealing with a few showers as well. But now most of the showers are just north of the lower keys. Breezy conditions later on today. Winds picking up at least around 15 to 20 miles per hour by the second half of our Saturday. As I mentioned, showers and storms are expected today. We're keeping that rain chance between 40 and 50%. Now that is indirectly from the disturbance. The good news is that this disturbance not expected to strengthen very weak. So we're going to get the usual impacts that we could see from a tropical wave. I will say this the winds are expected to increase, so it will become windy by tomorrow and that will continue at least early Monday as heavy rain will pick up Sunday late night overnight into Monday morning as well, but it may not be widespread. It could just be in a few spots where Rainfall amounts uh, could top maybe five inches. Now, here's a look at this disturbance on infrared satellite. Not very impressive. It's over the center parts of the central Bahamas heading across the Florida Straits by later Sunday morning and very weak circulation. As you can see, this is uh, the GFS model. Those wind particles, as you can see, are counterclockwise since it is a low pressure system. That's going to uh, bring up that surge of moisture out of the south, out of the Caribbean. Flooding is still possible for spots that usually do get uh, some flooding when rainfall happens so quickly and it's heavy. We do expect rain accumulations anywhere between two to five inches. So I've lowered it a little bit due to what's uh, showing up in the models because I don't think it's going to be widespread, but locally a few spots could definitely pick up those five inches. If you head out to the beach today, enjoy it. Today's a day to enjoy. Keep in mind though that rip current risk could go from moderate to high later on today. Highs today in the low 90s and then temperatures only getting into the upper 80s due to the clouds and the rain the next few days. Nikki. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. A new app offering teens all the information they need about the birds and the bees. The app is called Juice Box. It lets teens ask anonymous questions that are answered by trained and certified counselors or therapists. But some parents are saying that talk should be between them and their kids. You know, it's incredibly uncomfortable. I know it's something that should be natural, but it's not. Guess I hope if they have questions, they'll come to us. Yeah, right. But the experts argue it is a good and convenient way for teens to get accurate advice. And they say the app can even be a catalyst for that conversation between parents and teens because teen parents need the help too. I like it. And I'll tell you why. She's, she's right. It is an uncomfortable conversation. Not one that I'm not willing to have, but I don't think my son really wants to get into it with me. I, you know I mean? lived in a very Catholic home. <laughs> and you know what our parents said? Girl, don't ask me that stuff. You shouldn't be wanting to know about that stuff right. anyway. As long as the information is accurate 
and not, not too salacious. I yes. agree. Well, coming up, a South Florida teacher suspended this morning after some disturbing allegations. What she is accused of doing that had that mother outraged, a story you'll see only here on Local 10. And a live look from our Miami Tower Cam, the twinkling lights of the Magic City darken early on your weekend. The rain has not begun just yet. Jennifer has a full forecast for you, but today's definitely the better day of the weekend. Always watching, always tracking. Meteorologist Jennifer Correa on the one and only Local 10 News, your weather authority. Now to a few events that are happening today around South Florida. Take a journey through history. The History of South Florida Sports Museum is open and journalist, documentary filmmaker and curator Gaspar Gonzalez will lead the way starting at 1 o'clock this afternoon. To register, visit HistoryMiami.org. Take a walk with butterflies today and explore their habitats at the historic Deering Estate. Guests can check out the nearly 40 butterfly species that live on site. The walk starts at 11 o'clock this morning and it is free with admission into the Deering Estate. For more information, you can visit DeeringEstate.org. Not a heartbreaking Facebook post that has gone viral in a shining light on a major flaw in the Canadian healthcare system. That post shows an elderly couple who have been married for 62 years crying because there is not enough room for them in the same nursing home. The couple's granddaughter posted the picture expressing her outrage with the backlogged health care system and the picture has been met with an outpouring of support worldwide. It has been shared over 8,000 times. The family says they don't want donations but instead want to bring attention to the flawed health care system and they'd like to be together. And anyone that's taking care of an elderly person knows that keeping their spirits up and companionship is what really keeps them healthy. Let me tell you right now, the number one thing they could do for their health, that couple's health, is keep them together. It's period. Companionship. Yeah. Now, we would be crying if we ended up in the same elderly home. Together, yes. yes. I'd be crying, so get we me out of here. We kept separated. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I thought that was a very smart thing for the granddaughter to do. But something tells me that the Prime Minister of Canada might even get involved that in this one. That young, hot I mean, Prime Minister? Yeah. I think he'll take care of that. Easy girl. I know. Still ahead, a South Florida teacher really in some hot water this morning. We're going to tell you what she's accused of doing to a student. It is a story you'll see only right here on Local 10, and it's coming up in just minutes. Plus, a hunt for a shooter continues this morning after two teens were gunned down. What family members of those victims had to say. A typical summer day is expected this Saturday across South Florida. In fact, we're starting off things warm already in the low 80s out there. The sun is not even up and it feels like the 90s. All those details and the rest of your weekend forecast when we come back. Local 10 News starts right now. Time now, 631, 83 degrees, taking a live look out of our Miami Tower Cam, where it's a little dark and early, and people are relaxing. But it's not raining. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. That's an important that distinction. That system's still out there, but for right now, it seems like we're doing okay, right, Jen? We're yeah, okay. we're doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's... She's That's right for sure. <laughs> I saw that whole thing go ahead, so I thought it was going straight to her. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. well, uh, yeah, it was a double box, but that's okay. Actually, I need the time to talk about this and our weather today, uh, but here it is, that disturbance, very weak and not expected to intensify as it continues to track uh, towards the west-northwest, eventually into the Florida Straits. But I will say this, showers and storms are expected for the Bahamas and for parts of Cuba as well. Uh, the formation potential has gone down to 20%. That is good news. 20% the next two days. That's when it, um, before it gets to the Gulf of Mexico. Once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, the next five days, that formation potential is at 40%. But we're worried about the next two days because this is coming our way by tomorrow. And that's when we expect the heaviest of the rainfall, especially starting late Sunday overnight into Monday morning. The models are in agreement that it's going to go across over near the Florida Straits, at least uh, somewhere over the lower keys, but uh, circulation 
condition is very weak, so we're not expecting a close low. Now showers are popping up offshore this morning, and there are a few showers now finally getting into Biscayne Bay, but luckily these have weakened. We do expect light to moderate rainfall with those showers over the waters, and they're going to hold together, so maybe even Pinecrest, Cutler Bay, you'll get some of that rain. Can't rule out a few thunderstorms this morning. We've been seeing this the past a couple of days. But that's typical for this time of year. So today's a day to enjoy as a regular summer day before the rain tomorrow and the cloud cover as well. Uh, today's rip current risk moderate, but it could go up to high later on late in the afternoon. Out on the water so far, no advisories. The seas though, two to four feet, occasionally up to five. So those seas are expected to be on the increase through the rest of the weekend. For the Keys, still no advisories as well. The winds are picking up 10 to 15 knots later today out of the northeast to east and also the seas increasing three to five feet beyond the reef. I'll have more on a forecast coming up, Todd. All right, Jen, thank you. And of course, to keep tracking that wave throughout the weekend, it's really easy to do on your smartphone. You can monitor the local radar. You can download our free app, the Max Tracker. Max will even give you direct messages himself. The hunt for the person who pulled the trigger underway right now after one teenager walking down the street is killed and another rushed to the hospital. The other is expected to recover, but family members are now demanding action as gun violence continues to wreak havoc in their neighborhood. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston is live in Miami where that survivor is recovering. Laren, how they're doing? Well, hopefully they're doing okay. They're expected to be okay. This family was hit twice because the two young people who were shot, we've learned, are cousins. The 17-year-old was shot in the stomach. He was rushed here to Jackson Memorial Hospital and is doing well, still recovering. His 18-year-old cousin, unfortunately, did not survive this shooting. Can't talk to her no more. I can't do nothing with her no more. A mother's anguish augmented by reminders of a young life taken. She don't go out. She's not a troublemaker. <laughs> it was Thursday night when family members say the shooting started at the Liberty Square apartment complex. As soon as she came in the house, we heard gunshots. We're told Nisha Flowers was with her cousin when she was shot. He's expected to be okay. Sadly, Nisha did not make it. <laughs> Detectives canvassed the neighborhood Friday. Please give us peace in this community. While others called for calm. They say there's been too much gun violence, not enough speaking out. If y'all saw anything, anything, just please, please. She did not deserve this. An unfortunate and tragic situation. Of course, if you have any information, you're encouraged to contact authorities immediately to help them track down who is responsible for this deadly shooting. For now, reporting live in Miami, Lara Livingston, Local 10 News. She was sad because she saw one of her little friends being hit by the teacher. Now to one and only exclusive, a mother outrage after she says she witnessed a teacher beating a student on Miami Beach. Now that mother says that she was picking up her daughter from Lincoln Marti School when she saw that teacher slapping a boy across the face multiple times. Laura Pantano says that she also saw the teacher identified as Clara Luz Quintano Gonzalez grab the boy by his shoulders and shake him. Pantano confronted the teacher, then called police. This is up to the to justice, what it's her destiny. For me, she should be removed from the school system and definitely not be dealing with children. Miami police now investigating the incident along with the Department of Children and Families. Quintano Gonzalez did not give a statement to police, but has since been suspended. The Broward Sheriff's Office says that a man who was caught on camera knocking a woman down and then stealing her gold chain, seen here, has now been identified Deputies say it is 24-year-old Malcolm Turner you see on this video knocking that elderly victim down as she left a Wendy's so he could rip that chain from her neck. Luckily, she was not injured in that attack. Turner was arrested earlier this week for probation violation and resisting arrest. He's now facing charges of strong arm robbery and elderly abuse as well. <clears throat> Police are crediting the public with helping them catch a serial burglar. He was caught on camera climbing through a window of a home on North 31st Avenue in Hollywood last month, and detectives say he then stole about $4,000 in cash and jewels. Police have now arrested 64-year-old Rafael Rodriguez Noya. They say they saw someone, that someone saw the video on the news and called in the tip. 
Broward Sheriff's detectives have arrested a man for a fatal crash involving a mother and her son. They say 27-year-old Joel Hamlar was behind the wheel of an SUV that veered off the road, pinning the victims against a utility pole. This was the scene back in March along North Dixie Highway. Deborah Etienne and her 14-year-old son Jameson were hit. Deborah did not survive, and her son lost his leg. Detectives say toxicology on the suspect came back positive for multiple drugs. The Boca Raton man recently charged in the decades-old murder was back in court yesterday. A judge agreed to grant Alan Bregman $100,000 bond once he posted. The 75-year-old will be released on house arrest and will have to wear an ankle monitor. Bregman was arrested earlier this month in North Carolina for the 1977 death of his then-girlfriend, Deborah Clark. Clark was a 23-year-old nurse when she was killed in her Coral Gables home. Investigators say Bregman's DNA and fingerprints match those left behind at the crime scene. People in Italy coming together for a funeral service honoring some of the victims of the earthquake that killed about 260 people. In Pamizia, the service honored two women and their granddaughters, as well as three others who died in that earthquake this week. Meanwhile, more than 100 miles away, strong aftershocks caused damage in the Italian town of Amatris. Thousands were forced yesterday to leave their homes in the area. Officials have now declared a state of emergency as well as a national day of mourning. Still to come this morning, a grocery store robbery caught on camera and police say they believe this was an inside job. We'll have more on it still ahead. Plus a pair of masked crooks caught on camera ransacking a liquor store. The, the bizarre details coming up after the break. Todd Tonkin and Nikki Mohan on the one and only Local 10 News. Three men are behind bars for a grocery store robbery in Oklahoma. The police say was an inside job. Police say one of the men used a fake gun, pointed it at an assistant manager of the store, and demanded money. They say the manager then gave them cash from a register and the safe. Police say the men then stole that same manager's car. Well, investigators say they believe that manager was in on the whole thing. And the three men, well, they're now behind bars. Caught on camera, a thief stealing from a Canadian beer store while decked out in hockey gear. The thief and an accomplice broke into a convenience store in Manitoba and stole three cases of Budweiser. Now, the video is making the rounds on social media because the damage to the store totaled about $2,500, and police have not yet made any arrests. A Michigan mom and her two sons put up quite the fight when an intruder tried to break into their home. The family used a samurai sword to fight off the man trying to force their way his way into their front door. Sarah Ward says he kicked the door wide open as she tried to keep him out, and that's when the, her oldest son grabbed the sword and ran at him as fast as he could. So I ran and grabbed the sword and ran, ran at the guy as fast as I could in full intention of doing as much damage to him as possible. Ward says she now has a gun to protect her family. Uh, police are search, still searching for the man responsible. 643 right now, 83 degrees, that blanket of clouds keeping us nice and warm. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, we are underneath a lot of cloud cover out there in a few spots. Other spots are um, clear skies this morning, Todd and Nikki, but that's definitely helping these temperatures to stay put, stay in the low 80s. So warm start out there, 84 degrees still in Fort Lauderdale, 83 in Miami. Meanwhile, Kendall did drop to a low of 78, and then the past hour increased back to 79 degrees. It's 85 in Marathon, so basically warm start for this Saturday and with a cloud cover out there. Also, winds are light so far this morning out of the east and northeast, anywhere between 5 to 10 miles per hour. And with a few showers, I, now we're starting to see those showers getting closer to the coast before they were heavier storms weakened. And now these showers are quickly moving across Biscayne Bay. So Core Gables all the way down to Cutler Bay, you're going to get some rain pretty soon. At least it could start earlier for areas of a core of Core Gables, excuse me, and Coconut Grove. It's a bit heavy, but they're quick movers, so they shouldn't last long. Maybe just last around 15 minutes, maybe a little less than that, and then head out towards 
towards the west. Breezy conditions expected for today because of that approaching disturbance that's going to pinch those pressure gradients between the high to the north and the area of low pressure to the south of us. So we are expecting higher winds later on today, anywhere between 10 to 15, then by this evening up to 20 miles per hour. Typical showers and storms due to daytime heating cannot be ruled out with a few passing showers along that east wind. We do expect a little bit of rain tonight, still a few showers, but the heaviest of the rain should be arriving later Sunday in the evening. And by the way, Sunday, Monday should be windy as well. So higher winds expected by tomorrow. Heavy rain will be lingering on through Monday morning. Looks like that morning commute won't be uh, so nice for us because it'll be wet. <laughs> but of course, we'll always uh, be with you, your weather authority. So how much rain do we expect? Well, two to three inches across the general area, but even up to five inches in those local spots. Now, yesterday when I was looking at this model, we had rainfall amounts as high as six inches in the Keys. Now it looks like the Keys won't get that much rain. But again, this is a forecast model. It's been fluctuating up and down down very hard for these models to pinpoint exactly how much rain with a disturbance about you could definitely expect some nasty weather for the second half of the weekend. So for today, it's mostly cloudy now. Can't rule out some thunderstorms this afternoon. Highs today 90 degrees, but today's the day to get out there and enjoy and then tomorrow maybe kick it back a notch. But if you do head out tomorrow and the beginning of next week, you're going to need that rain gear and you're going to have to pack that patience on the roadway. Todd. Thanks right. a lot. Thanks, Jen. Coming up in sports, Todd and Nikki style, we've got what some would call the Super Bowl of high school, high school football, and it was right here in South Florida. Are you ready for some football? St. Thomas Aquinas and Booker T clashing early in the season. The heavyweight highlights you can't miss, especially Todd and Nikki style. Plus, the Marlins going down to the wire against the Padres. Would someone be worthy of that shaving cream pie from a mysterious monkey? Uh-oh. All your highlights just a few minutes away. Welcome back. Time now for sports Tom and Nikki style. And if there was a Super Bowl in high school football, last night's game between Booker T. Washington and St. Thomas Aquinas, it would be it. You said it. They're two of the top teams in the nation clashing right here in South Florida. Take Let's it away, Let's get to Todd. it. Yeah, St. Thomas alum and NFL Hall of Famer Michael Irvin with the coin toss. And then a wild start. Booker T. throwing a pick to open the game. But then University of Florida commit Paul Allen fumbles on a sack, giving the ball right back. That set up this Booker T touchdown. Daniel Richardson finds Sherrod Johnson for the score. St. Thomas, though, they answer with a rushing touchdown by Michael Epstein. In the end, Booker T wins this wild affair, 27-23. Looked like a good time. Sticking with high school football, check out this play from the Alonzo High School in Tampa. A sophomore Malik Johnson putting on the fake punt, flips over the defender, sticks the landing, give him a 15.9. <laughs> what a play from Johnson. Woo! The bench can't believe it. Alonzo, though, he would lose this one, though, 20-0. But that get, was a could, that was a good play though. Could get the gold in uh, the Olympic. That's right. Wrong competition. sport though. Here we go. The Diamonds, the Marlins hosting the Padres. Fish were down three runs entering the eighth, but Christian Yelich from the mountain top delivers the RBI single to tie it at six in the ninth. Chris Johnson deep fly ball. You can see he puts his head down, thinking it's a pop out, but have hope. Amen, brother. Someone said their prayers. It manages to land. Marlins get the walk off win, and of course Johnson gets the shaving cream pie in the face. Papa don't preach. The Padres go down seven six in the final. What a comeback for the fish. To the NBA, where the clouds are still over some Oklahoma City Thunder fans because they still haven't gotten over Kevin Durant's decision to join the Golden State Warriors. Boo hoo. Give him some wine with that. Give him some cheese with yeah. that wine, right? So much so that one town could actually be changing their name. What? Yeah. If you listen to this, a Thunder fan has now launched a petition hoping to change the town's name of Durant, Oklahoma to Westbrook, Oklahoma, in honor of Thunder Guard Russell Westbrook. And what are they gonna do when he leaves? Well, they gotta find another player to change oh. the name to. That petition reads in part in part, quote, I believe the state of Oklahoma has a responsibility to change the name of the city of Durant to Westbrook. The man who is loyal, whom we believe in, and who will lead our team to glory. Yes, it is understood that the city Durant was not named after the evil Kevin Durant, but it is just another hideous reminder of what happened to our community. Support the cause. Hashtag Westbrook. Okay. They need to get a life. Yes, they do. Because the person it's probably named after, which I'm going to look up in the break, is probably somebody really deserving, <laughs> and now it's caught up in all of their madness. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, that's sports Todd and Nikki style. That's right. 
Also to come this morning, folks, a coffee shop owner in New York City going viral for how he responded to being robbed. His reaction might surprise you, and we're going to have that story right around the corner. Right after I get some more coffee myself. We're going to take a live look out of our Fort Lauderdale Tower Cab where the sun is shining. The sun is coming up. Time now, 652, 83 degrees. What's going on in the tropics? Jen will have that for you next. Well, you know, everyone dreads going to the DMV, especially Todd Tonga. Oh, yeah. Uh, but not people in Holly Springs, North Carolina, apparently, because when they walk in, rather being told to take a number and to sit down, <laughs> they are greeted with freshly baked cupcakes, made to order fruit smoothies, and a self check in iPad. Wow. The DMV is privately owned, which allows it more freedom to be personalized. The owners say they just wanted to completely break the mold and give customers the best service. You know what? Mm. They probably make a profit, so they could be all happy, giving <laughs> iPads. The person that worked the normal DMV, they're not getting paid a big set of money. No, and they take it out on you. Listen, everybody's more happy with food. Ian Margo's mom made us banana bread. Oh, yes. It made put a smile on my face. Thank you, Ian's mom. Mm, we love that. An unusual message from a store owner to robbers who stole money from his shop. I better do this read since yep. she just ate. I'm eating banana bread. Burglars took off with the entire cash register drawer filled with $3,000 from a cafe in Brooklyn. But instead of reporting the crime to police, the cafe owner posted the sign of forgiveness outside of his shop. It's my religion. So I was, it's the way I was raised up, is to always forgive and always to give. This shop owner hopes that the burglars will see that sign, and he says that he could even give them a job if they came clean. It's very nice of him. Very, very giving. Yes. Good for him. I can't say that I would do it, but good for him. Sometimes you got to think differently, Todd. Local 10 News at 7 o'clock is coming up next. That's right. Taking a live look out of our tower camera. We see some clouds gathering there in Miami. What's going on with that? Jennifer, straight ahead. Right now on the Local 10 News, we are tracking the tropics as a wave of wet weather heads for South Florida. Your weather authority has everything you need to know to plan out your weekend. Teens under fire, two teens shot, one killed as police continue searching for the shooter. Their distraught family begs for help. A guilty verdict for the woman accused of killing a Miami police officer, the sentence she could face after her conviction. Plus, Zika testing getting a nationwide expansion as state officials talk about funding issues. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Mohan. We are tracking the tropics as this wave is set to bring us some heavy rain. Yeah, I'm Todd Tong, and thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday, August 27th, probably the best day of the weekend. We've been watching this tropical wave throughout the week, and thankfully it hasn't developed into something more stronger, uh, but it is going to give us lots of rain here in Florida, and that yeah, could mean some flooding. We, yeah, and something we need to be concerned about. Let's mm -hmm. get straight over to Weather Authority Meteorologist Jennifer Correa for the forecast. You know, Jennifer, even though it doesn't have a name and it doesn't have, like, you know, all this fancy stuff, it could still be a big problem. Oh, it's for some got people. a name. It's called rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, it's definitely good news that this did not become a named storm. It's definitely it's still a large area of low yeah. pressure with showers and thunderstorms. But as you can see, doesn't look too impressive on infrared satellite as far as that outflow there on the uh, basically on the northern side of the storm. If this was a healthy storm, we would see some outer bands and we would see a nice outflow wrapping around, but we would also see a lot more convection going on on the northern side of the storm, but there's still some wind shear that's cutting that off. So on the south, and east side of the center or what would be the center. That's where we're seeing most of the activity so far this morning. But with some daytime heating, we can expect uh, more thunderstorms to blow up and impact the Bahamas today, especially the central Bahamas and Cuba, uh, at least on the northern and eastern side of Cuba. Meanwhile, the formation potential. This is what's good news this morning. National Hurricane Center dropped it down to 20% for the next two days. We're concerned only for the next two days because this is already going to be an impact for us starting.
starting tomorrow. As you can see, that's what's showing on the in, on the models and uh, even the GFS right there in green. Still an agreement that's going to head uh, towards uh, the Florida Straits and then into the lower keys. That's actually happening tomorrow, Sunday, and then out into the Gulf of Mexico. That's where it has that higher chance for formation. But we're concerned with the next two days. So what can we expect? Well, as far as the GFS model goes, as you can see, trying to close off its circulation, not really happening. Very weak there and elongated. So this is basically more like a tropical wave. Impacts of a tropical wave consist of, well, heavy rain, a lot of cloud cover, even thunderstorms. Then let's take it over to the European model. The timing is almost about the same. Sunday, 6 p.m., just south, uh, that center south of the key. So this track is going a little further south than the GFS, but it's still headed towards the Gulf of Mexico in that general direction. And either way, uh, we're still going to get a lot of moisture coming in from the south. And speaking of moisture, we do have a few showers out there right now, seeing the rain right over Core Gables heading into South Miami. It's pretty heavy right now over US 1, a few showers over Cutler Bay, and some showers entering Surfside and North Bay Village as we speak. You could even see it outside of this Miami Tower Cam as we wake up to the low 80s. Thank you, Jennifer. Of course, you can keep tracking that wave and you can do it from your smartphone throughout our weekend with our free Max Tracker app. You can also monitor the rain live locally and get radar as well as direct messages from Max himself. Well, the verdict is now in for the woman accused of killing her boyfriend, a Miami police officer. A jury found Tonico Thompson guilty of second degree murder. Thompson will now be sentenced for her crime and she could face life imprisonment. Local 10 News reporter Ian Margul is live in Fort Lauderdale with the latest on this trial. Ian? Good morning, Nikki. Good morning, Todd. She was completely stoic when that verdict was read, completely emotionless. However, there was a lot of emotion on the other side of the room from the family and friends of the victim who have waited nearly, who have waited more than two years, excuse me, for justice. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree. More than two years after Miami police officer Carl Patrick was found murdered in his Pembroke Pines home. On Friday, his former girlfriend, Tonico Thompson, was convicted of the crime. We finally have vindication and everything, but it's still a hurting process. Patrick's family and fellow officers hugged and prayed outside of the courtroom. His old boss, former Miami PD assistant chief Craig McQueen, joined them. We just lost uh, one of our finest, one of our heroes, Carl Patrick, and today justice was served. The prosecution says Thompson killed Patrick after he found out she faked a pregnancy and ran up thousands of dollars on his credit cards. Thompson told police she was abused by Patrick, and on the night of his death, the two had been arguing when he pulled out a gun. Thompson says they struggled for the weapon, and she ended up shooting him in self-defense. Patrick's body was discovered two days later. You leave them there to bleed out and do nothing. Now, Thompson's attorneys say she was abused, living in fear, and that's why all of this happened. But the jury didn't really buy that, mostly because the state says her story changed several times throughout this investigation. Now she faces up to life in prison. We are live in Port Lauderdale. Ian Margo, Local 10 News. Now to the latest on Zika fears. Blood banks across the U.S. are going to start screening for the virus. The government says this is a major expansion intended to protect the nation's blood supply from Zika. Previously, the testing was mostly limited to parts of Florida and Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, Governor Rick Scott, he was here in South Florida yesterday where he held a Zika preparedness roundtable on Miami Beach. He detailed the millions of dollars in funds the state has already allocated to deal with the virus, but some leaders are asking for more amid worries that tourism numbers could potentially take a major hit. We've set aside $26.2 million out of the state budget um, with the support of the legislature. We have, uh, I have the authority to do that. We've allocated $23 million of that already. We just did another um, $5 million to Miami-Dade County. I said, is there a way to look at an emergency budget for marketing, for marketing Miami-Dade County? No word on whether the budget will be created, but Governor Scott is asking Congress to put forward federal funds to help create a vaccine. Members of Congress have been at summer recess, but they're set to return September 6. New overnight, a man accused of killing two nuns in Mississippi is now in custody. 46-year-old Rodney Earl Sanders has been charged with two counts of capital murder. Sister Margaret Held and Sister Paula Merrill, both 68 years old, were found dead earlier this week after they did not show up for work. Held and Merrill were found stabbed inside their Durant, Mississippi home on Thursday. Police said that there were signs of a break-in at their home and their car had gone missing. Police said they caught up with Sanders with the help from public. 
Held and Merrill worked as nurses and helped the poor in rural Mississippi. Developing out of Chicago, two people are now being questioned by police about the shooting that killed Dwayne Wade's cousin. Investigators say she was an innocent bystander. Police say two men began firing at each other while Nakia Aldridge was leaving a Chicago school. They say Aldridge was caught in that crossfire when a bullet <clears throat> hit her in the arm and head killing her. Wade's mother spoke about the tragedy. Wasn't bothering nobody. Just going to register her kids in school and bullets that fly around and have no name decided to find its way to her head. And so we're now in a very, very sensitive, grieving place. The former Heat star recently appeared on a panel discussing how to cut down on the violence in Chicago. This is what he tweeted yesterday. My cousin was killed in Chicago. Another act of senseless gun violence. Four kids lost their mom for no reason. Unreal. Hashtag enough is enough. The teenager accused in the murder of a Martin County couple and of gnawing on the face of one of his victims has now regained consciousness. Police say 19-year-old Austin Haruf is awake and responsive, but he has not provided a statement to police just yet. He is expected to be charged with the murders of John Stevens and Michelle Mishkan Stevens, who were both killed in their garage nearly two weeks ago. An investigation is underway after a man and a woman were found dead a short distance from each other in northwest Miami-Dade. Police identify that man as 19-year-old Christopher Francois, who was found a few blocks away from Grenells Park School in North Miami Beach. Miami-Dade police found the woman inside of a red Toyota outside a home about a mile and a half away from Francois near North Miami Beach. Investigators say they're not linking the two incidents just yet. What's going on? Why is this happening? Why did that happen over here? It doesn't seem like a thing that would happen in this neighborhood. Miami-Dade police asking anyone with information to please contact them. Now to two crimes caught on camera. Two armed men wearing masks and gloves robbing a pizza shop near Homestead. And this surveillance video was taken back in July. And at that time, the cashier had just started working at the shop, which is located on US 1 and 295th Street. And he didn't know how to work that register. So instead, the robbers took cash from customers and left. Also caught on camera, an attempted robbery at a CVS pharmacy in southwest Miami-Dade and the culprit walking into that store on Quail Roost Drive and 115th Avenue last month. Police say she pretended to make a purchase before then threatening that clerk. The clerk did not react and the alleged robber took off with just a few items. If you know anything about either robbery, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Amtrak will receive more than $2 billion in a loan from the federal government to buy new trains, upgrade tracks and make platform improvements. Vice President Joe Biden announced that loan yesterday at a Delaware station, saying it will boost seating by about 40 percent on trains along the Northeast Corridor. Teens under fire. The search for a shooter continues after two teens were shot and one of them did not survive. Still to come at 730. We are hearing from friends and family members left heartbroken by the tragic shootings. And also ahead, a 911 dispatcher could be losing her job after losing her cool. When we come back, you'll hear the call that led for a suspension. Live view out of Hollywood Beach Cam. Notice those palm trees swaying against that northeast wind. The winds definitely pick it up out there and also the surf as well. I have all the details on our weekend forecast. We're going to talk about those rainfall amounts and the timing when we can expect the heaviest of the rain. You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan. A high-speed police pursuit caught on camera. Look how fast this guy's going. This is happening in Arkansas. And police say it all started when an officer pulled over a driver for fake tags. That's when he sped away with several police cars on his tail. And you can see that driver makes a hard right turn trying to get onto the expressway. And he ends up colliding with another car in his path. Well, police quickly moved in and arrested that driver who was identified as 22-year-old Zachary Mitchell. Officers also arrested two women who were inside the car as well, one of them only 17 years old. Mitchell was charged with felony fleeing and possession of a controlled substance. She on the floor. Uh, sir, who robbed you? Me, me, me and the, the two people. Yeah, she's in the car. How do you help? Sir, they're on the way, but I need to get information from you. Wow, that dispatcher you just heard from is now on administrative leave, and police say it's because of her conduct during this 911 call. Police say two delivery drivers were robbed and attacked by a group of people, a group of teens rather, in Connecticut. They say the female victim was shot while the male victim was physically assaulted, and that man was the one who called 911. Which way did the car head? Could you tell me that? 
Huh? Which way did the car go after they shot at you and robbed you? Yeah, yeah. No, the officers are there. You might as well talk to them now. Thank you. The 59-year-old victim who was shot died at the hospital. Police did arrest four people for the shooting. The dispatcher has now been placed on administrative leave pending an internal affairs investigation. A driver in Iowa is lucky to be alive after merging too quickly and then being swept away by a semi-truck. Look at that! Oh my gosh! The car is, is trying to enter the ramp at the same time as that truck is passing through. The semi-truck then veers to the left but still drags that car down the road. You're not going to believe this, but amazingly, no one was hurt. All right, time now, 716, 84 degrees. The early birds are up, headed out to work. They're the ones job. that are going to catch the worm. That's right. Is your son headed to his job this morning? Uh, yes, one of them is. That's right. Probably Good for you. Them. Yes. Father of the year. Put those, <laughs> put those teenagers to work. Yeah, now they can start and paying me back. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> don't hold your breath on that no, one. No, I'm not. So, but it's going to be a dry one this morning for the most part, right, Jen? I saw some clouds out there on the Miami Tower Cam. Yeah, there have been a few showers. and Not everybody get, is getting rain. So most of South Florida, Todd and Nikki, actually starting off nice and dry. A few clouds still. Uh, and you can see them over the Atlantic out of Fort Lauderdale's tower camp, but it is a quiet start in Fort Lauderdale. Warm though, as temperatures have uh, barely dropped this morning, it's still 84 degrees. We've been at 84 in Fort Lauderdale all morning long, even when the sun was completely down. Uh, and it feels like 94, by the way, so quite sticky out there. 84 degrees right now in Miami, 78 in Kendall, 81 in Homestead, the mid 80s for the middle key. So it is definitely a warm start, typical summer day for us. That's exactly what we can expect for much of our Saturday. Only difference is that the uh, we're going to feel those winds pick up. In fact, we're already seeing winds picking up uh, over Fort Lauderdale, Miami, out of the east northeast at 10 miles per hour. A little bit lighter than that when you head southward of Miami. Now, a few showers that have developed offshore are now pushing in basically Miami Dade down through the Keys where we're seeing isolated showers. Broward, we're dry. Now, uh, these showers are pretty heavy, but they're quick movers. And uh, Cor Cor Gables now into South Miami, parts of Kendall seeing some heavy rain there. North Miami as well. The shower also extending back out into Surfside. And uh, Kendall, by the way, as I mentioned before, for that heavy rain is expected to last maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Here's the satellite with the radar. You can see, yes, there's a lot of cloud cover out there. This is not uh, due to the disturbance. I want to point that out. That disturbance is over uh, near the central Bahamas and it will continue to track towards the Florida sta Straits today and then heading into the lower keys by tomorrow. But keep in mind, this is going to be a very weak system, not expected to strengthen, which is good news. That formation potential down to 